Hi guys, hope everybody is well and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be how to change the radiator coolant in a Honda Fireblade. I've got a Honda a CBR 1000RR 2013 model, uh, so I'll be showing you how to do that. I've already done a how to uh, change the oil in the said machine, so if you click on the uh, link up here, that should take you to it. I'm not a trained mechanic, so uh, please take everything with a pinch of salt and seek uh, professional advice. So what do we need to do this job? I've got some distilled water, that's just to flush the radiator through. We need to undo the drain bolt on the water pump, so that's a good old uh, 10 mil socket. I've got four litres of ready mix, ready to go uh, radiator uh, coolant. So there's no need to do anything with that. The handbook does say it takes three litres, but I bought four. Um, some rubber gloves, just to protect your hands. Uh, this coolant stuff is pretty nasty. Um, all the other YouTube videos say if you've got some pets, cats, dogs, then make sure they're well out of the way, can't get into the area that you're working in. Because uh, it smells nice, they like it if they eat it or drink it rather, uh, they're basically going to die. Um, to uh, drain the fluid, uh, the radiator fluid out the rear coolant bottle, um, I've got a syringe and a 5mm uh, clear hose. And then to get rid of all the stuff in an environmentally friendly manner, I've just got uh, about three popcorn uh, plastic containers. Right, before we get going, uh, just a quick basics of uh, how the water uh, cools the engine. Uh, all the side panels are off on my bike at the moment. Um, so how does it work? Well, if I'm wrong, please uh, feel free to uh, correct me in the comments below. As I said before, I'm not a, uh, an engineer, I'm just a, a hobbyist DIY chap uh, doing his own stuff, trying to save a few pence uh, in his own garage. Uh, radio to the front, it uh, cools the water down if required and then it comes back into the uh, water pump which then circulates it uh, into the uh, cylinder block uh, via the thermostat the thing which is located at the box on the back uh, of the engine and if the thermostat senses that the water it, around the uh, engine is too hot it'll open the gate and then it'll send the water uh, to the front of the bike through the radiator and then back down again for recirculation and if the radiator water gets too hot then the fan kicks in and it uh, tries to cool it down to the normal operating temperature. On the fire blade, uh, there's also an oil cooler which looks like an oil filter on the front of the engine and there's two oil pipes uh, coming out of that. And then there's another big uh, pipe uh, which comes out of the uh, cylinder block uh, out of here and then back into the water pump for recirculation and uh, into the cylinder head through the thermostat sort of uh, units. Um, so that's about all we've got on this side. Let's have a quick look on the other side. So on the right hand side of the bike, what have we got? The uh, top of the uh, radiator here, we've got the uh, radiator cap uh, and the tube for the radiator cap going all the way to a silly place where Honda decided to locate the expansion bottle which you have to take the swinging arm and the wheel off to uh, access it to drain it um, but we'll come to that a little bit later on so that's what that pipe is for so basically when the radiator uh, water gets uh, hot it expands and if there's nowhere for it to go um, things could pop I guess so there's a little spring in here so as the water expands the spring lifts and then it goes into the outflow into the uh, radiator expansion bolt. As the water cools down, it basically uh, sucks it back in uh, into the radiator. So that's why your radiator um, expansion coolant bottle at the back there, it may the level may go up and down depending on whether it's hot or cold. Uh, that's the reason for that. And then there's another pipe here. This is coming from the uh, thermostat. A bit of a metal casing on here actually from the fire blade. And then it comes from the thermostat. So when the gate opens, water comes. Uh, through the gate and then it goes into the radiator and then it does its magical thing comes out the other side on the left hand side uh, a little bit cooler and the fan operates uh, if that is required so that's really it really. so I've taken the uh, what I thought was the drain bolt out and when I took it out uh, nothing came out just a few little drips so I wasn't sure whether this was the drain bolt um, but it actually is the drain bolt because um, what I've done just now is I've done the radiator cap 
and uh, water did come out into my popcorn uh, container. So I guess because the radiator cap is still on, um, there's a bit of suction and whatever. So until we let air in through the system, it just won't come out. So I'm happy that I have actually uh, undone the, uh, the, the, um, the drain bolts. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the other side of the bike, uh, unscrew the uh, radiator cap slowly, and you should see some fluid come out into the container. So quite a lot of water, so I've got the caps out. We do have to put the cardboard on the floor to protect the uh, floor from my animals that I've got. So here it all comes. It's quite a messy job actually. Trying to catch it all. So yeah, cardboard, definitely a good idea on the floor guys. Definitely a good idea. So well that's the first stage over and done with is getting the coolant out. So I've just quickly uh, mopped up all the, uh, the spillers that I had and squeezed it into the uh, popcorn container, shall we say, and then squeeze the hoses, try and get a little bit more fluid out. But it looks like I've got about, there's about two litres of radiator fluid I've managed to get out. Uh, but obviously there's still one litre sat in all the bits and bobs uh, within the channels in there that we uh, can't get out. And for that reason now, what I'm gonna do is, let's, Pop this drain bolt, just do it finger tight, and back into, into the water pump. And we're going to get some distilled water and put the distilled water into the uh, radiator and then run the bike. So we've taken the radiator cap off, and then you can see this pipe here, which flows into the expansion bottle at the back of the bike. But we'll drain that. Uh, in a little while from now, no problem at all though. So what we're going to do now is pour distilled water into the uh, radiator uh, filler cap. So we've got a little funnel, a little bit of hose on the end of it, cut to the appropriate length, and that just make, makes it a bit easier to decant the distilled water into the uh, neck of the radiator to, f to flush it through. So as I said, uh, this is a one litre bottle. Uh, once I've finished with this, I'll decant uh, some more distilled water from the bigger containers into this bottle just to make it slightly easier to uh, get it into the system. So the first bit of distilled water is in. Uh, the other containers of distilled water I've got are too large for me to pour in on my own. Great if you've got someone to help you. Uh, so I've just cut down the first one I had and then put some water in here and then we just carry on uh, filling up until the radiator, uh, the water pours out over the top. Just take your time doing it. Again, make sure you've got some cardboard down on the floor because um, I guess there will be some uh, coolant fluid coming out of that as well as you pour it in. So that's nearly two litres have gone in there now and that's about it. So that's it, we've filled it up with distilled water, can't get any more water in there, so we're gonna pop the radiator cap back on, make sure that's secure. We've done the drain bolt uh, up, so it's not dripping, and then what we're gonna do is just run the bike now, and we run it until the fan kicks in, and all we're doing is making sure that the all the water is flowing through uh, both the cylinder block and the radiator, and just flushing through uh, all the old coolant and then we'll let it cool down totally because you don't want to open the cap when it's hot which means it's pressurised, means you've opened that if it all comes out and you're going to get uh, scalded at the very least. So that's what we're going to do, uh, start the bike up and then run it until the fan kicks in. Right, so we're just going to run the bike now until uh, thermostat opens and the radiator uh, fan kicks in. The thermostat starts to open at 80 degrees and it's fully open at 95 degrees according to the manual and then the fan should kick in uh, thereabouts or shortly afterwards. As always, start a bike uh, in a confined area, make sure you've got good uh, 
through ventilation, that's why I've opened the garage door. So that's at the fan kicked in about 103-104 degrees, so switch the engine off and then uh, go and find something else to do, something more productive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So make sure that the engine is cool before you do this, and now we're just going to remove the drain plug and get rid of all the fluid. Right, that's out, and as before, uh, no, very little water coming out, if indeed any, and it won't come out until we uh, relieve, relieve the pressure by undoing the radiator cap, so let's do that now. So for the last flush, which was the fourth flush in my case, I decided, as well as undoing the water pump drain bolt, is to actually undo uh, the hose uh, part coming out of the radiator and going into the uh, water pump. So I just decided to undo this clip here, which is very simple, just unscrew it. And then what I found worked for me was to move the clip forward and then get hold of the pipe and then you just pull it off and then all the water, water came off. Easier said than done. So just be careful not to damage anything. So just rock it backwards and forwards. And then the pipe came off and then all the water came out and that gave us about, uh, about two and a half, I'm uh, sorry, about, um, just about two and a quarter uh, litres of water that we managed to get out and then I just rocked the bike backwards and forwards on the um, when it was on the side stand and got a little bit more water out so just to connect the pipe back make sure everything's nice and clean and um, we just put the clip on first and then put the hose on you've got to waggle it around a little bit bit of force bit of brute force but it will go back on eventually and then you should hear it clip into place and you know you've got it on yep so there it is just it's seated on its uh, however it goes in and this is a case of working this clip uh, back over the pipe to where it was originally before and when you're happy with the final position of it then just get your screwdriver and do it up don't do it up too tight it wasn't overly tight now you don't want to start splitting the rubber. Firstly what you need to do is just remove the little uh, jubilee clip or whatever it's called uh, from the hose, just pull it back and then just remove the pipe from
from the radiator filler area and then with that 5mm pipe that amazingly slots into there and then all you do and I've got a 100mm uh, syringe here so if it all works it should take about three syringes got my popcorn bucket and let's hopefully it will work so there it comes starts to come out now so you see the fluid's coming out So that was about 250 millilitres I've managed to suck out there and then what I'm going to do now is just pour some distilled water through the um, filler cap at the back there. It's all ready to go now so let's just suck the distilled water through to clean the system. Right, so I've got my tube, put the tube into the uh, new coolant and let's just suck up 100 mils at a time. Uh, in the reservoir bottle and we just feed it through. So do that three times. I know there's going to be a little bit of fluid in the pipe. But we just have a look at the the end of it to see how much food we've got in there. So this is the third one I'm keeping an eye on the level so it needs to sit between the lower level and the upper level. So I'm just going to go around the other side just to have a look get a better view. So I reckon we know the air, it's uh, not quite halfway between the lower and the upper level so I reckon half a syringe should do it and then we'll have a look, check the level. So that's half a syringe. Yeah guys, that's uh, spot on. It's just over uh, halfway between the low and the high level, which is uh, more or less where it needs to be. So that's worked really well. So let's get undo that. Again, lots of cloth around. Hello. Car's still going, man. This is the fresh, this is the fresh stuff going in. So. Come here, hey. Well, let's stay here. Stay here. Out the way. Well guys, uh, there is a reason as to why I was only getting about two litres of water uh, into uh, the radiator uh, to top it up. Uh, basically, I've been down to my local Honda dealer and they tell me that, as I very well know, uh, that the uh, engine and radiator combined take three litres of uh, coolant. However, as you can see, uh, the outlet from the radiator is about halfway up. Uh, some manufacturers have the outlet a hose at the bottom of the radiator, uh, not uh, on this 2013 Fireblade, it's halfway up the radiator so unless you actually want to take the radiator off, turn it upside down, um, that is the only way you're going to get all the uh, water out. So um, you will always have about uh, one litre maybe thereabouts of water uh, within the radiator, there's no way you can get that out. When I say no way you can get it out, um, about one litre uh, will always remain within the radiator so when you start flushing it through with the distilled water in effect you're having uh, clean uh, distilled water remaining in the radiator so the worst case scenario is when we put in the new coolant is that uh, normally it's 50-50 uh, 
um, we will be diluting it a little bit but the technicians at the Honda dealer say that's fine and that's how they do it I'm moving on from that uh, on one of the uh, UK uh, CBR 1000 forums I did ask that question to get some feedback and one bloke said well if you've got one litre in the radiator just go and get some uh, undiluted antifreeze so one litre of that uh, pour it in the radiator so you've got one litre undiluted to one litre of distilled water in the radiator which we can't get out that gives a 50-50 uh, mix ratio and then with your two litres of uh, pre-mixed um, antifreeze uh, at 50-50 that means the whole bike is still uh, in effect 50-50 so that was a good uh, uh, suggestion from somebody on the uh, motorcycle forum right enough of all that let's crack on right so I've got two unopened bottles of my Yamaha coolant stuff so um, I'm going to crack open the first one I know I've already opened one already for the um, expansion bottle but I want to know how much is actually going in there I guess if you've got a measuring jug uh, you can do that but my missus would kill me if I was using a measuring jug from the kitchen so that's the first litre in So the bike's cooled down, taken the radiator cap off, uh, tried to put some more fluid in, but basically uh, 2.1 litres or thereabouts is all it would take. So radiator cap's now on, I'm going to run the bike up to temperature again until the fan comes on, and then just check for any leaks uh, from the pipes I've removed. Uh, other than that, it's all good to go. I hope you enjoyed the uh, fairly long-winded video, but I wanted to do it from uh, start to finish because I don't think anybody else covered it properly uh, on YouTube. I hope you found it interesting, it'll hopefully save you a few quid. Um, any comments, uh, put those down below and I'll have a look at them, uh, constructive or otherwise. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, give us a big thumbs up and thank you very much. Uh, ride safe, ride well, and speak to you all again soon. Have a great time. Bye.